Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to our Blue Rose Kennels YouTube channel. Today our video is going to be on traveling with our dogs, safety and comfort, both in a box truck and a van. Also, this week I get to have a free giveaway, so stay tuned for that. Hey there. Today's video, we're going to be discussing traveling with our dogs in a safe and comfortable manner to and from the dog shows. Some of the things we'll be talking about will be air conditioners, how to use them properly with venting and fans. We'll be talking about the proper type of bedding and buckets and safely put in a crate for travel. We'll be talking about other safety measures like fire extinguishers and temperature monitoring equipment. Those things and several more. So let's take a walk outside into the vehicles and show you what we're talking about. Hey everybody, now that we're outside in the truck, let's talk about safety and comfort. First of all, foremost importance is safety. So for safety's sake, how you pack and, and what you use to pack is very important. For one example, you wanna pack your truck with the efforts focused on if you have to stop quickly. Typically your, your, your dogs and your, your equipment is not going to move from where you put it on an acceleration type thing. We're, we're not driving race cars here that accelerate quickly. It's the quick stops that we make, bumps, and things that were are unexpected that we may, like again, have to stop for real quickly. So what you wanna do is you wanna pack your vehicle so that in the event of a quick stop, nothing's rushing forward. So it's best to move things toward the front of the vehicle, secure them with straps, some of the heavier stuff I like to use are the ratchet type straps. We'll go back and show you what those look like here in a second. But let's start with the main thing coming in the door. Always by your door for safety, you want walking leads to be able to get the dogs in and out of the vehicle quickly if there's an emergency. We have those right here by the door. Uh, some umbrellas for inclement weather by the door. That's not necessarily safety, but comfort. <laughs> and then we have, of course, a fire extinguisher. We have a fire extinguisher by the entrance and exit door of the truck and I also have one up by the driver's compartment door uh, for if you get out of the vehicle for a problem. We, for safety I use both bungee type cords and the ratchet straps I spoke of before to hold things in. We put our canopies up front here, safety for if they move forward and then for ease of getting them out of the truck to set up or during the during the dog show. So for some more items, let's come back here real quick and look at safety. The, the ratchet strap I'm talking about is a heavier duty strap. It can tighten as you go, just like that. So it, a, a well-used piece. I use that, like I said, for some of the heavier stuff or the stuff up high. Uh, for our crates, we have crates that were custom made for the, the size of the truck. We have some removed. So when you remove some, or I should say when it's full, it's a very tight, cohesive unit here in the truck. When we've taken some out, you're gonna to wanna to use a bungee or something just to hold them to the wall. When they're all in here like this, it's kinda of like Legos. They're pretty tight in there and not gonna to go too many places. The other side is the same. When we're ready to travel, our tack box and some other equipment will go up here and I'll bring this big ratchet strap right here all the way around to hold that stuff in. On the back here, some of our milk crates with just the supplies and bottles. I just use a bungee. It's not that big a deal. Then we have some extra bungees around for when we finish packing. We have a temperature sensor here. It's called a Marcel unit. This one I just found out is going out of date. It's a 3G model. I just got an email the other day that they're moving into 4G technology, so that might have to be replaced. So if any of you out there have one of those, you might want to check into that, replacing your old 3G with a new 4G model. This unit monitors when the power is on or off. You can set a temperature range for comfort of the dog and also monitors humidity. So any variance in what you've set, your ranges you've set, you'll get a text message or an email, however you set it up. Also on our truck, we have a unit that if the power goes out from a plug-in type situation, the generator automatically starts. And many, many trucks of this size and RVs have those type of things, so it's not that uncommon. But one thing I do wanna say, the, these devices, whether it be the generator start or the Marcel, those are just mechanical or electronic devices. They can fail. There is no replacement for checking on your dogs. Frequently, often, whatever word you want to use, in good weather, bad weather. So another big thing that I never ever do is leave the truck completely closed up. It doesn't matter to me if there's 50 amp power and it's the best power around or the generator's on and it's working like a charm. I'll always have a vent open 
or a window open for the dogs in case things do go out. As long as there's ventilation, that gives you a lot of extra time to avoid a real problem. Another thing about safety and temperature, I don't like temperature differential for our dogs to be drastically different than outside. Yes, we want to remove some humidity. We want to remove some temperature so they're comfortable. But you don't want to take a show dog or any dog for that matter, or a human for that matter, out of a 72 or 70 degree vehicle with 45% humidity to outside where it's 92 or 82 and 60% humidity. It's just too much of a differential. If you can keep your dogs at a temperature, I sometimes would even say if, even if it's only 10 degrees cooler than outside or 15 tops, that's a great model to go by and that's kind of what I like to do so it's not such a drastic change. In order to help that, I all kind of came up with an idea. I don't know if it was, well for me it was my idea. Somebody else might have thought of it. You'll notice in your air conditioning and humid situations, you'll get a lot of condensation or builds up when your air conditioners are running or in your AC duct work, you might see water or condensation. What that means is the AC unit can't remove all the humidity. It's getting uh, moisture up there. What I did a year or so, well, probably been time flies, probably three or four years ago, I thought, well, why don't we try this? Why don't we try a small room size dehumidifier and put it in the truck? So we did. It's plugged in right here. It's on all the time. You would, and the water builds up in this. You have to manually drain it uh, when it's full, but you would not believe the difference that little dehumidifier makes in a truck like this. You will never, I should say never, don't use the word never, <laughs> you rarely see condensation up on your AC units or on your duct work. And your AC unit has to work so much easier when it doesn't have to remove that humidity. So that was a great addition to the truck in the hot weather. We're going from safety now and comfort back to a little more comfort. We have a Primo pad that fits to the size of the crate. They offer obviously different sizes for different crates. Some dogs can't have them. Some dogs earn the right to have them. <laughs> this one's been chewed on a little bit. What we also do is we like to use sheets on the, these pads. It's, some dogs will be able to will chew, some won't. Some are coated and don't need a lot of padding or a lot of warmth in the colder months. But all the time, I use a sheet over the pad. Just put it over the pad, fold it nicely in the corners. This is about as close as I get to making a bed, I think, I've been told. So it goes, looks a little bit like that from behind. Then when you put it in the crate, you'll see it lays nice and flat. Dog's comfortable. You can see if it soils anything, that's going to absorb it. Or if they have an, even if they, heaven forbid, they have a little injury, you might see a spot or your bitch is coming into season, you'll be able to see that. If the dog needs a little more, padding or it's a you know a short coated breed or something that gets cold in the winter you can always throw another crate pad of some type or your liking fleece bed whatever on top of that another thing that uh, we have done for safety in our truck is i've installed these eyelets for water buckets i know we all for so long we just clip the buckets on the holes of the crate or on the crate door these are just stainless eyelets they go all the way through the crate side through the rail and, and our screwed right in and are not coming out. I like to use buckets that don't have the little curls on them. You'll see different stainless buckets. Some will have a curl. That curl's a sharp object and traveling for sure, and, and I don't even like them in the kennel. Dogs can get hair caught on them, coated breeds for sure, ears. I've even seen, and it was not a good accident, a little eyelid dog got caught in there. So we use this type of bucket. I like to, I prefer a solid or a cl completely closed clip, something that can't get knocked off so easily. And when you put this bucket on that eyelet and clip in, it's not going anywhere. It can get knocked around. Dogs can't really get it off the, off the hook. Same principle, different size crate, different size bucket, same thing. Have the hooks in them. This is what it looks like from the outside on the smaller ones. Have the bedding, uh, same way, pad wrapped with the fleece on top and the bucket goes here in the corner just like the rest. I think that may be summing it up. Oh, another little comfort creature. We have a small, in our truck, a small ice maker. It's not going to keep up with a big margarita party that some of our friends have sometimes, but it will keep a little bit of ice in the truck. And if you need to throw some ice in a dog's water bucket that you just brought back from the ring or is a little bit warm, and even some dogs, we've got a couple that'll chase ice cubes around the floor in the kitchen, so they just like them as toys. That helps with a little bit of that as well. Oops. 
Oh, just real quick, so we can point out in a, in a regular size van, typically we will have something like this. Everything's still neat and in its place. So there's still air conditioner, vents, but like I was talking about moving things forward and if you have to stop rapidly, on some of these vans where you have your dogs up on a rack or something, put a little lip here. This is a little aluminum piece that you can screw right to your, the shelf and that crate cannot come forward, no matter what. It, if it, it can't come forward, it's gonna stop right here. Also, you all your things in bins again, nicely labeled. Same principle, just downsized <laughs> in a van. Oops. Hi everyone, hopefully all that information was useful. And today, like I mentioned, I get to have a giveaway. Woohoo! And <laughs> did I really just do a woohoo? Oh God. Uh, our, my giveaway this week will be a Terrapin Cool Coat. It's a beautiful product, keep the dogs cool, right along the line with the comfort and safety thing at the shows. So again, that's gonna be on Sunday the 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, the winner will be announced in one of those fun spin to win things. So now the important stuff. In order to enter the raffle, you must subscribe to our channel, like the video, comment in the comment box, cool coat, and then follow the link to the Terrapin Craft Works Facebook page and give them a like. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like our videos, ring the bell, and all those other things you're supposed to do. See you next time.